I'm going to switch gears from the cutting and filing for a bit and I'm going to try to get the shock mount bushing and both of these mount bearings into each case. Next I'm going to try to make a couple of plugs to fill this hole and this hole and this is where the electric starter would go and that opens up right into the CVT so I just plug those off that way I don't have to worry about any uh, dirt water etc getting in from the uh, back wheel being thrown into here. Here's the first plug, it's for this small hole, obviously, and it's just a little larger than the hole because I want an interference fit. Could use heating the case and cooling this. I'm just going to see if I can drive it in. One down. See that blocked off there. Second plug for this large hole. Basically the same idea. I'm gonna heat this just a little bit to make it easier and cool this real quick. The only other holes that go all the way through here are this one and this one. Both are threaded and both are M6 by 1.0, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut a couple of bolts real short and then use those to uh, plug that off. And I'm going to use permanent thread locker, the red stuff on these, because I want them to stay put. Now I want to work toward getting the crank into the engine, but before I can put this in the engine, I'm going to go ahead and put the supplied SKF bearings onto the crank. And what I'm going to do is heat the bearings up, put them on this block of wood, heat them up with a heat gun to somewhere between 200 and hopefully no more than 250 degrees. You can monitor with this, and I will cool the crankshaft with uh, air duster held upside down. Just before the crankshaft, or just before the bearings go onto the crankshaft, and hopefully they'll just slide on.
Now I'm going to try and get the crank into the crankcases. I'm going to start by installing it just into the large side of the cases here. Similar process, I'm going to heat right around the bearing area, try to get it up to 200 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll chill the bearing on the crankshaft and hopefully that will slide right in there. Well that didn't go as planned. Sometimes it just happens that way. I think I tried to put it in just a little bit crooked and it kind of jammed up right there so it didn't get all the way in. Either that or maybe the temperatures weren't where they should have been. But obviously that's not very well seated. Sometimes it just happens but that's why I keep a crank install tool handy. Well that and because at the end of the process a lot of times I need to center it up and it works for that. So I've got this slides over the crank, then this piece has to go on the crank with the rounded side in. Doesn't have to be super tight, but got to be on there snug. That slides up here, then this part of the tool can thread onto there. Again, this doesn't have to be super tight. And this part goes over this. And there's a little keyway in there that you've got to line up so it actually fits. If I can find it. There it is. The nut on the end. And kind of snug it up against the engine. Let me turn it so you can see. So it's got this piece goes right up against the engine there and then basically use a wrench tighten this nut and it should pull the crankshaft into the engine hopefully yeah you got to make sure this crank or the con rod doesn't uh, jam up against there when you're trying to pull it in And I try to monitor how much space there is right here. I don't want to pull the crankshaft all the way up so it's pressing against the cases. I don't want it quite as far apart as it is now though. I want to leave a little bit of space there. I'm going to stop there and I can always, once I get the other side in, you can kind of pull the crank whichever way you need it to go to center it up and make sure it turns freely. Okay, so that's in one side of the crankcase anyway, and it's freely turning. If it's not freely turning, you've probably pulled it all the way up against the cases, and it'll have to get pulled back this way at some point later. Now I need to get the small case half mounted to the crank and the large case half, but before I do that, I'm going to apply some sealant. This is 3 Bond 1184, uh, just to these areas here where the cases meet up, case sealing areas and then put these two dowels in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and heat this case, similar to what you saw with the first case half. Maybe I'll get lucky and uh, it'll actually go on this time.
So that didn't go all the way in. I guess it's going to be one of those days. But that's okay. We can give it the same treatment uh, as the other side. Use the crank installer tool on it. And it looks like it's pulled that a little too far over, but we can fix that in a minute. Before I worry about centering the crank, I'm going to go ahead and install my case bolts. Get that tightened up. I've got it all bolted together, and my crank will rotate now, but it's really hard to turn. And it appears that I have too much room on this side and not enough over here, so I'm just going to reattach my crank installer tool and pull the crankshaft toward the large case half a little bit and try to center it up. Now you can see my crank spins much more freely. Should be able to do that basically just by sight and by feel. If you want to be a little more perfect, I guess, or if you're having a hard time, you can take some feeler gauges. You might have to stack a couple together and use them to just see how much room there is on each side of the crank and compare. Now I'm going to install the seals. <laughs> 